Hey, this is Troy Taylor with the Championship Football Coaches Clinic Podcast, sponsored by. I got to rattle these things off, Coach. You know, I got that wise education. You got it. Reps, virtual reality, next pick, first down playbook, rat coach, tip of the spear, the top hopper, sideline design, sports workbook. We're streaming on Sideline Sports Network. Coach, sideline design, legit, legit, legit. Love it, Coach. I've put out about 100 graphics. Yeah. Coach, tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from. And we're going to get into some wing T buck series today, man. I love the wing T. Um, I'm originally from Virginia. My name's Kevin Saunders. I've been a head coach for probably 29, 30 years. Um, now, I guess in the latter part of my coaching career, and uh, I'm in Georgia now, right outside of Atlanta. I'm at Duluth High School. I'm coaching linebackers. My reputation was always defense, but my team's – you know, I've been fortunate to won a lot of games running the wing T and spread. Uh, I think they, you know, coexist, but I also think it's a thing that the wing T nowadays gives people that aren't as good as some of these other teams a chance because it's something nobody sees all the time anymore. At one time, you would play three or four or five wing T teams a year. Now you might not see any to the playoffs or not see any at all. And you got a lot of coaches nowadays that don't really see it very much or understand it. And a lot of them, you know, the, the younger generations, I don't think really understand. Back when we started coaching, everybody was running a different offense. I mean, it was like you'd have a wing T and I, and you'd be in some spread, you'd have single wing, you'd have two type T, you'd have split back veer, wishbone, all yeah. these things you had to prepare for. Now, now as the coach to me and it's gotten kind of easier to me is playing spread teams everybody spread team you know there's yeah. only so many times you so many formations you can line up in so many blocking schemes that you can do running inside and outside zone and power read and that those things that it's just you know the kids see it on the first game of the year and it's they're seeing the same offense in the 10th game of the year uh the only thing that's different is personnel and uh, i think that's got a lot to do with it and i think a a lot of coaches nowadays think you can, you know, out coach people and out scheme them and stuff, but it's all about the execution, what the kids can do. It's not what the coach knows, it's what the kids can do. And uh, I ran the wing team. We had some teams that weren't as good as some other people, and, and it would give us a chance to get the ball in the fourth quarter, the game in the fourth quarter, and we controlled the ball. And it was good for us. Uh, I learned it coming down to Georgia. I learned it in Virginia from Paul Wheeler. And I learned it from Jeff Heron. And I learned it, learned it from Sid Maxwell. All of them have Virginia ties, and two of them are coaching down here, uh, Sid and Jeff Heron. And they've both been very, very successful. Uh, I've just learned a lot of it. I don't know it that well. But if you really want to know the wing T, talk to Roger Holmes right now and Jeff Heron. Uh, they're two of the best there are, and they're older guys like me. And they've been very, very successful. And, uh, you know, I was fortunate to win a lot. Like I said, a lot of games running the spread. I won a state championship and running the spread. And, and won a lot of reaching championships running wing T. So I think it's all about how you utilize your personnel. I think that's one thing in high school you got to do is you're not out there recruiting four-star quarterbacks to come in and make sure you're running the wing T. Now, some schools are. I ain't going to lie to you. Some schools go out and recruit their kids. To me, you know, the greatest thing about coaching high school is every year you're dealt a different hand with the kids you got. So is it taking a square peg and putting it in a round hole or do you adapt to what you have and do what's best interest for them? I've seen some people that, you know, like Paul Johnson winning all those games at Georgia Tech and they haven't recovered since he left. I mean, they haven't won a game since he's been gone. And they were in a wishbone, you know, they're running Veer and, you know, now they can't win any games. So mm -hmm. I think an Army proved that, you know, an Air Force and Navy proved with different types of clientele of athletes, you've got to fit your offense to give you a chance to win. And I think that's what you got to do in high school. Yeah, no, no doubt, Coach. I had a young guy tell me he was so smart when he was so young. He was a GA. And he knew it all. 
I said, dude, you better learn the history of football. He goes, oh, I'm not reading any books. I don't, I don't read books. And eventually, when he became head coach, the first game, he's playing against a wing T team. And he's asking me how to stop the wing T. I was like, well, that's why you got to study, you know. And he's playing against a single wing this year. He's like, what you, what should you do? I said, run your defense. I mean, it's misdirection. Like, do you ever get asked that? I mean, people call you up and say, hey, man, I'm playing uh, wing T. Well, a lot of people will call me since they know I'm a wing T guy and a defensive guy. So they'll call me up and ask for things like, what do you do? How do you line up to this front when they're running a wing T team? And, you know, you could all these up. I, one of the hardest things for me when I was coaching, like in Wise, we, Wise. it was just completely different than what you saw them play against the week before. People would come mm -hmm. over and just change everything, which to me, makes you that much worse on defense you know oh, yeah. I, I think you got to get it yeah i think you you get your base defense and you stick with it and you know we went up when we won a state championship there at Gretna, the first round of playoffs we played john battle at our place and they were uh wing t the next week we had to play giles and they were single wing then the week <laughs> after that we had to play riverheads with double wing and in the state championship game we had to play goochland who was a wing T team and well, no, Amelia in the semifinals and they were spread with Brad Bradner. So yeah. we faced all those different things. And, and I felt comfortable with my knowledge, little knowledge that I have of football is we got out there and lined up and played and we won the state that year. The year before I thought we had a more talented team when we played Gate City. And they took, there was a game in the state championship, and they were too tight T. We were spread. There were no punts in the game. Nobody punted. Neither team punted. And, you know, we ended up losing by, I think, a touchdown or field goal. But they had the ball the whole time, and they knew that they had to go for it on fourth down. So they would get four yards, three yards, two yards, and fourth one, and they'd go for it. And then, and we just played, traded touchdowns back and forth. and. I probably made a mistake and tried to kick a field goal uh, right there at, at the semi and right there in the inside the 15. And, you know, we missed it and stuff, and it just wasn't good. And we ended up losing the game because of that. And, you know, they I thought we were a much better team athletically and stuff. And if we could have got up, I felt good about it. But we didn't. So they controlled the tempo of the game. I mean, they really did a good job. And, uh, it's just the way it is. I think you as a coach have to suit your personnel, you know, run your offense or defense for what you got. I mean, you know, you get all these guys that want to run, you know, a three, four. Well, it's great if you can find four linebackers or five linebackers. Yeah. Linebackers. So you got all DBs out there. I mean, you got to take, you, to me, high school coaching is the purest form of coaching there is because yeah. you have to be able to adapt with what you do and scheme it to what fits you. Now, my thing is your philosophy of coaching doesn't change. I've been a, you know, we saw, I started off as a wide tackle guy, then went to four, two, five after being there at Virginia tech with coach Foster and coach Beamer and learning that. And then I got out there and we were getting gutted there for a while and running it. And it's just cause we didn't really, I couldn't come up with four down linemen four defensive ends, you know, two really good defensive ends. Now, I had them at Gretna, but I didn't have them the next year at Gretna, the year after we won the state. So we went to more of a 3-4 scheme, and it bet suited our personnel and gave us a chance to win, got us in the playoffs. And I think, to me, I didn't change the way I coached. I changed my scheme. We still were very physical. We hung our hat on playing great defense. We hung our hat on being very fundamentally sound. Uh, we ran the spread, but we blocked it like wing T, and it was enabled our offensive linemen to do what they could do. And I think that's what high school coaching is about. And I think some people forget that, or they see it on television, or they go to a clinic and they learn, you know, all this stuff that the University of Georgia or Alabama is doing, which is great. That's all great scheme and stuff. But if you don't have a guy that can play it, you're wasting your time doing it you got to do what's best for your team. Now, sometimes people think you got to run the spread to get the kids out. Well, if that's the case, then, you know, it'd be great. What if you don't have a quarterback can really throw it? I mean, 
To me, you're just beating your head against the wall. So what are you, what are you going to do? You're going to sell your kids short, or you're going to adapt, or, or you just want to show everybody, well, we're running spreads just like everybody else. I think you got to change with what you got. I totally agree, Coach. And, you know, whenever somebody comes to me and they say, well, Troy, I got to play against the wing tee. I mean, you always want to know, you know, are they a Buck Series team? Are they Belly Series, Counter Series? series? What do they hang their hat on? I mean, one of the well, greatest was Pulaski. Man, when Pulaski was running that wing tee. You can watch it on yeah. YouTube. That, that was good. I mean, you can pull up stuff that I've run on film and things. Where are you going to hang your hat on? And, 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 and I've had that discussion with coaches before. What are you going to hang your hat on? I don't care what they come out and run. What play are you going to be that year? I mean, one year, I'll, I'll tell you, the, the, there towards the end there at Wise, we were not a very good Buck Series team. We were a good trap team. We were much better down team to the tight end and counter coming back. That's mm -hmm. what we were good at. So that's what we hung our hat on. And, and then when I've been in Tennessee and we were running it, we were really good with the Buck Series. When we were so good at William Campbell, we were great at just running power and counter crisscross. And we could throw the three step like a champ. And we threw Wagger really good. So that's what enabled us. And that's what we did. So I think it changes, you know, with what you got. Uh, one of the greatest things I ever heard was Steve Ragsdale was talking one time about coaching and he said you know if you're this oh yeah and you're that ass, yeah we ain't winning i don't care what you <laughs> the o's gonna win yeah we're not you winning know? that one you could be the same coach and then be the same coach and now you that x and you <laughs> that oh the x is gonna win so to yeah. me the coaching is getting there and get your personnel how you want it and then if you got to do it you're gonna win yeah. Nine times out of ten. But if you, if you don't have the dudes, you got to figure something out to give you a chance to win. Yes. And I truly believe offensively and defensively nowadays, if you don't have the dudes, you got to be doing something that those kids haven't seen. Yes, do something different. Defense. Do something completely different. Because when you get to the season, technically, they only got three days to work on. Well, I yeah. they really do. And how much are those kids going to really pay attention to you coming out there and say you're running beer? How hard is it going to teach them in one week to play the beer? You know, option responsibility is completely something different than what they've been doing for, say, four weeks because they played four spread teams before then. And now you're playing somebody like Maris down here who's under center and running beer and, and you know, wishbone. And it's just completely different than what you've been doing. But it gives that team a chance to win the game. And same thing with what they did at St. Pius and some of the schools down here. Bob Christmas was the same way, running wishbone. And, and then he went to the wing tee. And it just made them better with chances to win. And they would make deep runs in the playoffs because they had, you know, kids do it. I mean, Sid Maxwell was a wing tee team down here forever when he was at Sequoia. But now he's at Dawson and he's still coaching and they still play the same way, but he's in spread, but he's also running the Buck Sweep out of spread, in which spread teams call pin and pull, which it's just Buck Sweep. It's just Buck Sweep's all it is. And, you know, those are things that I think you've got to adapt to, like I said, to what you got going on. And I think that's one of the things that, you know, I'll talk about right here. And, and it's very easy to adapt it to the, to the spread because spread teams already do pin and pull, but you can block it the same way. And we did at Gretna won a lot of football games, state championships and stuff when I was a head coach there, and we just did it the same way. Right on, Coach. I'm looking forward uh, to listening to you. We got a bunch of people watching on Twitter. Sideline Design retweeted it. So thank you, Sideline Des Design, for doing that. And, yeah, Coach, I'm just – I like the wing T, man. Coach Bowles was a wing T guy from, you know, Meadowbrook, and I love yeah. it. Well, I I don't claim to be a guru about it. I've learned, <laughs> and, and I think it's been good for us and where I've been in the past, and I think it was good. It, it helped me change. When I took over at Pebblebrook down here, they were five and – or four and 36 before I got there. 
Mm. And the first year we won four games right off the bat. And they'd been a spread team. Well, they also had a five foot eight quarterback and they were running the spread and seven eight football, which, you know, a quarterback that size, I don't think is the greatest thing in the world. So we went my first year, we got put them under center and got down in a stance and come off the ball. Needed to change the mentality of the football team. I knew that first year we weren't going to win a lot of games with who we were playing, but I needed to change their to their toughness and to make them really much more physical. And I think if you're physical on both sides of the ball, you got a chance to win the game. Urban Meyer said it nine times out of 10, the most physical team will and I And I truly believe that. So this is how we start off with our basic wing formation. And I, you know, you'll get some true wing tee teams that'll call it 100 series or, or whatever. We use words and called our formations according to words and it made our kids a little easier for them to call out was just wing right for us mm -hmm. and you know it's tight end tackle guard center and then wing back was here now i played wing back where he tilted in i've also played him where he's square uh i think he's better off tilted in a little bit in a two-point stance uh i had a kid that did not like being caught did not like playing fullback fullback you know I'm a running back. So instead of calling him fullback, we called him tailback. It wasn't yeah. different. I could have called him whatever he wanted to know. Yeah. I could have told him he was a snowman back there. It didn't matter. It wasn't changing exactly. his position. But for some reason, his mentality thought, you know, I'm a fullback. I'm not getting the ball. Well, he's getting the ball. And the other one's our, our halfback, or we always call dive back. And that's yeah. our basic wing T formation. Now, some of the things that we talk about to our kids is we want to line as far back off the football as we can. We want to be as far away from the, our offensive line, want to be as back as far as they can to run the football. We want, if it's illegal, we're better. It's, and my thing is, in coaching high school football and stuff, to me, it's not a penalty until they throw a flag. All right? So you go out there and, and you line up as far off the ball as you can. We're going to be in a three point stance. They're going to be off, and you know, they talk about their ear holes. Ref referees don't really know all that stuff, so we're going to be as no. as we can. And we're going to be, you know, the depth of the fullback's going to change. To me, it's three to four yards, but if he's fast and he's quick, you're going to have to back him up a little bit to get your timing down. All right, so our Buck Swear series is going to the right. One is, one is to the right, and nine is to the left. Now, I've never been real smart and was – you know, I always kind of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine across the front. I don't number the backs. We we were all in series. It's a 20 series. It's our buck series. So our kids knew that when they heard the 20s, they knew they were running buck sweep. Everybody's running buck sweep right off the bat. Now, who's getting the ball? We made it easy. Right? We would just call trap. If we want to run 24 trap, that's what we called it. But for this guy back knew he'd run buck sweep. And that's what he did. His pack, everybody's pass stays the same. Our trap rules are different, but we do things a little bit different. I drew up an odd front because you'll see it. But we don't number gaps. We number people. So, and our and way I always learned it, and what I want to do is we want to double team at the point of attack. All right. So us, if we're running twenty-one buck sweep, we're going to double team right here at the point of attack with the tight end and wing. Now. Everybody steps inside. So his first step's going to be here. His first step's going to be here. Now, tackle pinches, he's got him. If he comes to this gap, he's got him. The rule is gap down backer. Gap down backer. Gap down backer. Over and over. And that's their rule that they just got to know when we first started teaching it, that was their rule. And, you know, we would change blocking assignments, some and different how we did it. But when we first started, everything for them on this was gap down backer. This is not a trap. So there are no trap rules. So they knew the trap rules were gone. Buck sweep. Buck sweep's meant to be an off tackle play. Run in here. And that's where we want to run it. And but we also tell them if there's nobody out there, you run the green grass. But your aiming point is you're going to come across and you're going to square it right there and go. 
and it's important that they go across. Now our depth of our back is three to four yards. His feet are going to be even with the fullback's feet. All right. And on the snap of the ball, I'm very peculiar about everybody's step. And when they used to see us play or practice, we would run what's called bird dog every day, every day start practice. Mm -hmm. All we did was everybody, we would do everybody's first step. And everybody had to take the first step to play. So our running backs would be running back coach, offense line coach, and me would have them down there with the offense line. We call uh, 24 trap. We want to see everybody's first step on it. And we did. They would be down there in stance and they'd do their step and everything. And it had to look. And we'd have their backups behind them too. Everybody's step had to be the exact same. Mm -hmm. And it was like everybody said, Well, your kids are robotic. Well, I don't care. You know, uh, robotic is AI, if you ask me. And all that, you know, chat bot and all that, those are robots. They're supposed to be the smartest people in the world now. So obviously I was ahead of myself in time. Yeah. I was way, I was a chat bot back then. So yeah. we got them all there and we're doing our steps every day. And we would do shoulder skills with our offensive line. We blocked with shoulders on level one and hands on level two. And I was still throwing shoulder forearms during, you know, to what, seven years ago when I first got here, eight years ago. We were still throwing shoulder forearms with the offensive line. Uh, and that changed the mentality of how they play. We're going to play flat backs. We're going to learn to come off the ball. I love seeing these guys get uh, get over there and all these trainers in the world. And they, all right, he's got an offensive lineman. You get on Twitter and watch one of those offensive linemen. All they're doing is their bucket step. I'm going to step back. I'm going to step back. I'm going to step back. Well, when they get to college, you're going to run the ball 40, 50 times a game, maybe at some places. Maybe it's going to be 30 and 30. Maybe it's going to be 50 and 40. But you're going to have to come off the ball at some point. So you got to learn to step forward. You got to learn to step at a 45. You got to learn to come off the ball and hit somebody. I love, I don't see those trainers with those offensive linemen teaching drive blocks. I don't see it. I don't, I, I never see it posted on Twitter. So, you know, we're going to see that stuff. You don't ever see them really showing them double teaming their butt to butt and going. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to talk about 21 bucks sleep first thing. I know our ramble and all that. This is against an odd man front. We get over there and we have our center call the front every time. The quarterback doesn't call it. We have the center call it. And we've gone from all sorts of line calls to everything to let everybody know who was pulling. Uh, we also went to where they never said it, never talked on the line of scrimmage. It was just their mentality of what they were comfortable with. I like them talking so everybody knows what they're doing. I don't care if they know the play. Uh, one of the greatest things in the world is, you know, offensive coaches, well, you got to be unpredictable. Well, there's only one way to be unpredictable. What's that word? you got to be predictable first before you can be unpredictable. Yeah. I mean, people don't understand that. And I'm going to tell you, if I'm going to play somebody that's going to try to out-trick me, we're going to win the game. I mean, you don't yeah. out-trick very many teams. You don't out-trick. The only people you out-trick is yourself. So we're very simple with it. Now, we take our guard. Now, they're going to down block. And they're going to down block. And we either get a corner or safety. You get all sorts of things. But he's going to open up and get his shoulders and his head facing out here to who he's going to block. And he's going to be a kick out. Now, we always tell our guards, if he wants to come inside of you, you log him. Okay? You're going to log him. Backside guard's going to pull and get some depth. And he's going to come around here. If it's a kick out right here, he is the wraparound. And he's going to get to scrape him back. We tell our, we tell our guys, we don't want to take them this way. We want to take the kids, the def off defensive linemen, down towards the center. We want to get a wad set up right there because what we want is you get a wall set up, and that's where he's going to get behind and run. Now, on the back side, we will cut block here, cut him on the back side, and he's going to run to the cutoff, and that's the back side corner. And what we want to do is get this in here like this, and then he's going to cut it back across the field. Now, quarterback reverses out. The fullback fills the backside. We don't fake to the fullback. I don't put the ball in there. Or anything. Mm -hmm. 
We want our quarterback to get his back to the line of scrimmage when he gets the snap. So when the fullback comes, he doesn't know he's getting the ball or not. It's going to look the same. Trap's going to look the same as Buck Sweep. Buck Sweep's going to look the same as Trap. And we're going to do that. If we get an even front, you like my make two grease board here? Like I'm yeah, man. I love really it. Here. That's all you need. I'm old school, man. So uh, am I. Say we get 731. You get seven technique, three, shade, and we didn't care what they were gonna do. Our block, our blocking remained the same up front. We're gonna block down. Here he goes. That's seven technique. That's his gap down back. The wing back's path remains the same. We want to get him double teamed. That's the first level. We always emphasize to our kids, we got to make sure we block level one first. I don't do this chipping and coming off. That's the, that everybody always talks about you chip and you come off. Well, all you do is you get a guy to somebody and then it goes to linebacker and then the people are running free. I love that when I was telling you, know, I coach defense. I hope they chip us. I mean, touch us and then you go. And next thing you know, both of them are just chipping and the guy's left wide open to run down the oh, field. Yeah. And make <laughs> so, Center is going to block back, or we'll make a call with the center. He'll make a call so the fullback will know that he's going to get the one technique. Center's going to block play side and climb the linebacker. He has to protect a gap. He's going to block down. He blocks down. His guard pulls, kicks out, backside pulls, wraps around. He comes, squares it up up off tackle it is an off tackle play i know it's called sweep but it is an off tackle play mm -hmm. we're still getting our we're getting our double team at the point of attack and we tell them we tell our guys two ways to down block if you get a penetrator on defense your head goes in the front your hat goes in front of the of the offensive defensive lineman if he's a reader and he sits and squeezes, you're to put your helmet on the back side of him. All right? Because if he's reading, he's not going to be able to come over top. So we want to put our helmet on the other side of him. And that's always game planned how we do it. And that's one of the few coaching points that I try to make sure we really emphasize in practice. Not few, but it's one of the things that we fine tuned the more I got involved with the wing tee. Uh, Gary Morton, who's a, was the offensive line coach, been a head coach in Dublin. He's the offensive coordinator. He's one of mine when I was at Gilmer. Might be one of the best offensive line, wing T offensive line coaches I've ever been around. And mm -hmm. he called the plays at, at Lamar County here in Georgia. He's as good as there is in coaching offensive line. He's, he's incredible. And he, he, we, he would drill those guys, and I'd go down there and watch them, and he had them drilled where they knew – kid was a penetrator or not and they would get their hat placement exactly where he wanted them and it was and it really made us a much better football team i used to always be you gotta get your head across and then you get the guy that would come off split a double team whatever and he would do that well i learned from him that you put your hat behind them if they're going to be readers hat in front if they're penetrators and the path is take these guys this way because you got the angle. We're not really knocking them back off the ball. What we're doing is we're knocking them down the ball. And they're going to come in here because everybody's going to read your guards. And that's great. Read your guards mm -hmm. all you want. You know, everybody reads your guards when you run. Everybody talks about reading the triangle and all that stuff with spread teams and, and those kind of things. But you, give, you play these coaches have been doing it a while with this. They're going to have you running over there, and the ball's going to go back the other way. So, you you know, that's one of the things that's great about this offense is there's always an answer to what you're running. So, when we get to double team there and knock them back. We get everybody covered. He's going to cut off, and he's going to run this way. Now, quarterback, he's going to always waggle out to set up the waggle pass off of it. And that's what we're going to do. And 
it's, and it's the same way every play, every time you call 21 buck sweep to the right, that's the way it's going to look. And that's what it is. Now, we got into different formations there after a while, which would cause people some issues on defense that, you know, everybody on the, over there on defense always would talk, well, they're going to run the ball to the tight end side, all right? <laughs> well, we would get this going. And put some wing back over here, away from the tight end, and put in our heavy set over here. And however you lined up, we can run buck sweep this way, we can run buck sweep back that way. And that's the way we felt mm -hmm. comfortable doing it. And we would just go, you know, our, we would get to the point where once the kids were good with it, they would just go to the line of scrimmage and we would tell them either or 21 or 29, you'd call it back to whichever side you wanted to run the ball to. You know, mm -hmm. whatever, we always counted, you know, because they're usually going to put your best defense at the end right here on the tight end, all right? And then they're going to put somebody in this gap, and we're going to block down on him. And we're just going to down block, kick out, fullback goes this way, we'll run buck sweep, weep. Right there, everything remains the same. And we love running that formation. We run, love running power out of this formation, we love running trap weak out of this formation, trap strong out of this formation. This formation usually gives defenses fits, and it's just something we like doing, and we like running our buck sweep and trap out of it. We would call either or, trap right, trap left, and they'd get to the line of scrimmage, and if it was trailer, it was trap right. If it was tractor, it was fullback trap right. And mm -hmm. that's just the way we called it at the line of scrimmage. And then our kids just got so confident in it and it was easy for us. And we liked these putting this formation out of it. It also enabled us to run the ball, also enabled us to run waggle back to the tight end. And it was just a really good formation and adjustment for us. Our adjustment to me really comes with the formations. You get all yeah. these different formations and you're running the same play. Mm -hmm. And that's what was good for us. Uh, one other thing that's a note for me is I, the only kid on our football team that would take a handoff like this was our fullback. Everybody else would take a block and table. That, that way mm -hmm. they could always give the ball on counter crisscross. And people always ask, do you have a problem with, you know, the double handoff? Well, we would take it that way. And it was easier for the kids to give the ball because it was already right there in their hands. Here they got clamped down on it, move their hands and get it that way. So our, all our mm -hmm. backs, except the fullback, would take the block and table. And it just made it easier for us to hand the ball off. And the quarterback seemed to like it better. And the kids liked it better handing the ball off. So on the Buck Series, everything was the same. And we would tell our kids to always put their hands on their hips, little things, and they have to run their fakes out. You know, after, you know, if, he, if we're running track, he can't come here and stop. That's just not going to get it for us. And mm -hmm. we were very important that we wanted to run our waggle fakes to where we would pull our quarterback. The thing with us out of the wing tee is we always felt we had two, three, four runners that could get the ball. And that's what we wanted to do offensively was have more people that could carry the football. And that made us feel really good about what we're doing and then passing in one, two, three. So you still feel good about it and the back flaring. So you're still been doing, you know, three step drop. We would run five step out of it. We were just under center, but it was not any different as far as this, the scheme's different, but we could still throw the ball out of it. I always had a thousand yard passer. And it was just because he was good at it. One is it's three step. We made it easy for him to read. We would just run a flat and you know a slant and an out to that side to where people would have to do it. If they would man up on us, we just ran people off and would run the ball behind them. And it would make it would get you pretty hard. We got to the point where we were really good at it. But the thing was we started with it and North Hall when Bob Christmas there and Bishop was there. Those kids were running it all the way up. They were winning eight, nine games a year and did not have the talent that everybody else did down here. They were winning games when, you know, they had good players, but they were beating people in the playoffs. They shouldn't be beaten. 
and they, they've done it and they were doing it all along until now the North Hall felt like they were a spread team and they did really well this year. I think they won one or two games, but the year before they're winning seven, eight games running the wing D. So I mean, probably upset some people saying that, but it's, it's just true. It fit into what they were doing and then their kids were really good at it. And I think that's what you got to do. And, and I think you got to hang your hat on, you got to believe in something that you do. I mean, if you're a power, if you're a spread team, you still have to have something that you believe you can get up there on one yard and know you can get it running one a play for one yard, fourth and two, that you know you can put your hand in the dirt and knock them back and get it. Mm-hmm. If not, you're not going to win too many games. No. You're not. You don't. And I, and I, and I truly believe that. Now, when we get to track, our track rule is we always trap the man, first man, head up or outside and point him the hole that's called. So if we call 24 trap, that's our buck series. And see, the thing is, it doesn't matter the formation. The center is always going to be five. The guard's always going to be four. He's going to be three. He's going to be two. He's going to be one. So to them, the kids already knew that's just the way it was. I mean, it's just that easy. That's where the ball was going to be run. That's the point of attack. All right, so that's what we made sure we're going to do. And we, you know, everybody would tell us you can't trap the two technique. Well, that's not true either. Uh, I think you can. I mean, here's the thing. And Gary was really good at this. I was one of the first guys that said you can't trap the two technique. Well, he would get a big, he'd get a big split right here. He just widen the split. You know, they don't, I mean, I mean here's, here you go. You're playing this team. This team's playing you for the first time in three weeks. They've been playing a spread team. Do you think they've paid attention to any of these splits in here? Those kids on the other side of the ball. Do you think their coaches really paid attention to it? Usually not. So we would vary our splits with these linemen when we play, just like Veer teams always did. That's the that's the thing we would always get over. You had to you had to coach those splits when you playing those those Veer teams. They get you, you know, cars. Newman there at one time was, was running his sideline to sideline. They were supports. They would get on the center and they'd be between the hashes with two tight ends. Their formation would be all the way, you know, between the hashes. And you, you would have to figure out how to line up to it. You would have to adjust your defense to their splits. And those are things that we would do. And we would track him. If he squeezed a gap, we knew it. We would make what was a long call for us. And he was to be trapped, and we trapped the next man out. Those linemen would do that. And since we're back off the ball, I think one of the mistakes people make is, is they pull backwards. I don't think you need to pull backwards because you're so far off the ball because his first step's going this way. He's blocking away. Well, his step is a 45 right here, and he's coming right off his butt. And he's going right there, and his fullback's just going to get in there and follow him up here. And we're going to leave these guys. We're going to go down here and block to where there's the wall and he just gets behind it and goes. And, and that's how we're going to run trap. And then, you know, the backside, if you get over here, he gets he just cuts it. And I, we, I, we're we going to hit, knock your knees out. We're going to take our shoulder for him and hit you in your knees. That's one thing kids mm-hmm. don't see a lot of. You know, they don't see a lot of them in college. You don't, you don't knock the kids off their feet anymore. And I think that's something that's difficult for them. Next thing you know, they're playing defensive line, and they're just sitting there and making sure you don't hit their knees or cut them. Well, that gives us an advantage. I mean, I hate to say it. I've been on defense, and other teams bigger than us and would push us around. We tell our defense line, go cut those offensive lines. Make them fall down. Just knock them down, make a pile. Maybe they run back a trip over them. you got to adjust mm-hmm. to what you got. And that's what we're going to do. And our buck series, and the track would remain the same. He would still run buck sweep. He would have been running just like he had it, and he would move the leg out. And we would bury our splits between the guard and the center. And that's, we did that. And how we practiced it is we would practice every day against a different front. Mm-hmm. Because we didn't always know what we were going to do. And we never added another play or another series till they were comfortable blocking that series, the buck series, until they were comfortable with it. Then we would add the power series. 
we went, I was at JJ Kelly. We went into the first game and had four plays in three formations and lost, they had lost something like 30 some straight games or whatever it was. I don't remember. And we lost the first game seven to six because we missed an extra point. And, but we ran the football team in the year before and beat them. I don't know how bad 40 points or so. And we had those same kids and we just, we ran buck sweep trap and that's all we ran. Uh, two different formations and wagon and the three step drop. And that's how, that's how we attack people until they were comfortable with it. And then there it was, we would add, we would just start getting better because all those kids were running in youth league. They were running when they came up to play JV. And then, then we got them, they were doing the same thing we were doing. And it was good for them. They were good at it. And we got really good at it and gave us a chance to play with people. I mean, we'd be Pal Valley knocked the state's longest, uh, Winning streak out there my first year, which we had no business beating them, but that game gave us a chance. They, you know, they weren't used to really seeing that offense run that way. So it was good for us. And, and teams had different ways of running. The general gist of it is it's gap down back on the offense line. It doesn't change. You get up there and that's what you did. No doubt. So, so what what is your man, you know, I go through this and... Yeah what's that what, what was your, what's your quick game consist of coach I Hold on I might be breaking up what's your quick game consist of Yeah the quick game was all our three step drop and it was max protect we would always throw it over here to our we would run buck sweep with three step motion. We always told our guys, we never gave them a time to run with three step. We worked it in practice to know that they, when that ball was snapped, they had to be where the where they were if they were in a dive back position. So anytime we would be going with the ball, they knew they would take off, and each one of them ran it and went at different times, but they would always be there. Our three step game was always one, two, three, throw. And what we did was we would run a slant and out and we would do this flat defender right here. We would put him in a, in a little bit of trouble. And if he would drop to the slant, we just went ahead and threw the out. Now, if you know you got over here and you got too deep and stuff, we kind of liked when you had too deep. We would run hitches on you until the cows come home. We just throw a three step hitch out there. And then it would be max protect, fullback would always go opposite to tight end. If the back was back here, he would bubble. If he was here, he'd run me out. If it was a hitch, he would run right there. If he was in the backfield, he'd just sneak out right there. We're gonna throw the hitch to the receiver. And then we would run verticals. And then we'd run the old wheel route. And it was always one, two, three. Our kid knew to throw it. And we could pass protect. We, uh, we were old school. We'd all block solid protection towards the center and keep everybody in. If we wanted to, we'll send him out on post every time down the middle, unless we felt like we had pressure off the backside. But our three-step game is really good for us, especially with William Campbell. I mean, we had some kids that could run the ball and catch the ball, and it made it very difficult for teams, and it was good for us. And, uh, you know, we had little wing backs. We didn't have big kids. We didn't have big kids on the offense line. We could play offense line. We went to the state semifinals two years and got a row, and I don't know if we had a, our center weigh more than 160 pounds. Mm-hmm. But he never got he never got above your thigh pad either. He would mm-hmm. he would root you out and stuff in there, you know. And then most of the time he's getting a double team to help him block. So you know we're not asking somebody to do something he couldn't do. And we'd have those 130 pound run backs and wing backs. That could come down there and they get on you hitting a linebacker. And that's the other thing. A linebacker never sees those wingbacks coming down in there to hit you, those, you from out there, right in your hip. And if it was below your hip every now and then, we might have slipped and cut you. I'm sorry. You know, and or we bounced off of you. Until it's a penalty, it ain't called. You know, that's one thing I always tell them. Don't come off the field and tell me you're getting held because I didn't see the I didn't see the referee throw the flag. Just be man enough not to get held. That's that yeah. easy. And, you know, so don't come make excuses. I don't want to hear it. We don't, my, my teams don't make excuses. You just play. 
Yeah, I love that, Coach. We getting ready to have a storm. Yeah, we getting yeah. ready to have a storm here, so that's probably why we're cutting right now. Well, Coach, thank you. Is there anything else you want to say? How can people get a hold of you? Um, if they have any other questions, yeah, you can get me a hold. Get a hold. Yeah, get a hold of me through Twitter. If you want to know something through Twitter, if you want to know something defensively, or you want me to get you in touch with somebody, I'm all about the coaching fraternity. I learned it when I started coaching it. To me, I'd always go to these clinics and go and sit in the bar with, with all the old coaches and just sit and listen to them tell those stories and talk about mm -hmm. coaching. And, and that's how I learned and, and got networked where I knew a lot of people. And it was just, I enjoyed sitting there and learning from these older coaches. No doubt. I guess that's what we do now, but we do it on YouTube, Coach, in this podcast. Uh, I know. Everybody does it all through a computer and stuff. I still like sitting around talking, smoking a nice cigar, and having learning how to talk about football. I still believe Amen. the old ways. Amen, Coach. Thank you, Coach. I'm going to press end here. We'll Troy, stay on for a minute. Thank you, brother. You're the best. Good luck this season. Hey, I appreciate it. You're doing a good thing with this stuff, and I appreciate it. I watch a lot Thank of you, stuff. Thank you, brother.